this one is kind of a, a deja vu experience because it's a relaunch of yet another audio classic design. In this case, the Mission 770. Originally launched in 1978, turned out to be one of their most popular speakers of all time, and now it's back. Now, as soon as I heard about this new 770, I instantly thought about the JBL L100, which was huge in the 70s, and it came back a few years ago. And it's, it's a very American speaker. It's very rock and roll. It looks really cool, the, the JBL. But you know what? This one here today, the Mission 770, is definitely more my speed. This, this speaks to me now. It's a two-way stand mount speaker, which by the way, the stand is now sold with the speaker itself. It's not an optional extra. It's included in the price. And I'll get to the price soon enough. And like the original, this new version of the 770 is designed and made in the UK. Got to get to this right away. Although I love it with the uh, white laminate uh, baffle showing where you see Mission 770, you can cover it up with a grill. It does come with a really nice cloth grill, but I, I rather listen to it and look at it in its uh, natural form. So it is a two-way design with a soft dome, 28 millimeter, which is I think 1.1 inch uh, tweeter. It's an all new tweeter and the woofer, a polypropylene, well, mineral loaded polypropylene woofer is eight inches, has a die cast chassis. Oh, and a little bit about the crossover. Uh, I'm not, I don't know the details of the slopes or anything, but just looking at it, those air core inductors on the tweeter crossover and the mid range woofer crossover look pretty darn impressive. As for the cabinet, the cabinet is a two layer cabinet. The outside layer is MDF. The inside layer is particle board. And between the two layers is a thick dampening glue. Uh, and inside the cabinet, I'll show you this cutaway of the cabinet is filled with absorptive material of different sizes and shapes. It's pretty, pretty elaborate. Oh, I want to talk a wee bit about the finish options. There are two uh, black, Everybody likes black, apparently, but I prefer uh, real wood finishes, and this one is extra special. It is walnut, and it is absolutely scrumptious, deep. I mean, you just look into this grain. Really, the pictures cannot do it justice. And you will notice that, yes, there is a large port, actually much larger than the original 770, right there under the woofer. And it was, I didn't hear any sound, any chuffing sound, any farting sounds coming from that woofer. Oh, one other thing though, on the back panel, you'll see these really beautiful binding posts, really nicely done, uh, but they're best used with uh, banana plugs. Uh, the, the actual posts themselves are too wide to accept most spades. So you'll either use bare wire, likely to use either bare wire or banana plugs with this speaker. I'm gonna put up the specs right now and they will include impedance and you'll note that the impedance is eight ohms dropping down to as low as six, meaning it's a very easy load for just about any amplifier tube solid state. So don't worry about any need for one that can deliver current into four ohms or less, not the 770. It's easy does. It's a very easy to drive speaker. And speaking of easy, the price, the price isn't uh, easy. It is $5,000 a pair. And that price does include these incredibly well-constructed steel stands with uh, generously sized uh, spiked feet. For those curious souls out there, yeah, 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 yeah. There will be actually a very special audiophiliac viewer system of the day later on in the show. So as for my review system, I'm gonna list that directly below in the description box. But the two amplifiers specifically that I was using were the first watt F8 and also the Pass Labs XA25. Both really low powered amplifiers. Didn't feel any need to have more power on tap to make these speakers get up and go. You know, I always think the first piece of music I play over review kind of sets the tone, right? It's kind of a thing, like it's the introduction. I mean, I listen to it briefly, just, you know, getting everything sorted together. But when I really sit down to listen, that first piece of music 
kind of sets the tone for what's going to happen next and after that and after that. So I wanted to use something British, British rock. And it turned into, well, the Smiths BBC sessions from 1983. <laughs> Whoa. I lucked out. This was good because, well, first of all, Mike Joyce, his drum kit just leaped out of these speakers. And as soon as that happened, I reached for the volume control and I turned it up. Now, I'm not a loud listener normally, but I do have to do that for, for my reviews just to see what a given speaker, what a system can do when played loud. And this system played loud really well. Now, these aren't small speakers, but they're not, you know, hulking floor standers. And yet they, they, they took over the room like a floor stander. So those drums were on fire. And, and uh, Morrissey was just tearing it up. They are great band live. That's what I kept thinking. Well, you know, I usually listen to studio of uh, Smith's records, but this live stuff is phenomenal. <laughs> and yes, the 770 sounded really fine, turned down to much more reasonable levels. But yes, these speakers can rock. Other, other, uh, other records came and went, but the, the next one to talk about is Woodstock, specifically Santana's uh, performance at Woodstock. Again, just the sound of those, the drums and the percussion, and of course, Carlos Santana's guitar just was firing over everything. Yeah, I've been in kind of a Santana mode lately. And again, I was playing the speakers loud because I can, because I wanted to, because I was just digging it that much. But then I wound up playing John Sebastian at Woodstock, and it's just him alone with his guitar in front of 500,000 people. And yet it feels intimate. And surprisingly, because this is a live recording in 1969, engineered by Eddie Kramer, who also does, who was Jimi Hendrix's engineer. But anyway, John Sebastian's voice, the tonality of his voice and his guitar was so right on, so natural sounding. So yes, the 770s, their top end is uh, polite, reserved a bit. It's certainly never bright, but I never felt like I was losing detail or clarity. I mean, let's put it this way. The clarity in the mid-range was exceptionally good, but it's not the kind that like hits you over the head. It's not that sort of clarity. So I, you know, I have a thing about texture. I love the texture of music, that feeling that you can reach out and touch it. And this organ track from Philip Glass Remixed, uh, you know, for you people that aren't particularly into Philip Glass, this remixed record, the CD, I should say, I'm sorry, it's a CD, double CD. It just takes everything about Philip Glass and messes with it, remixes it and makes it into this other thing which in many ways I prefer to the actual Philip Glass. I mean, I really like Philip Glass's records, but this one is a easier, easier to digest, we'll put it that way. So anyway, I'm listening to this and I don't think you can stream it. I looked around, I couldn't find it anywhere. But anyway, I'm just bringing it up for conversation purposes. The way the 770s do texture, mid-range texture is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, very high res in the middle, but not like in your face, not glaring, not peaked up or anything like that. No, if anything, it is kind of laid back. And speaking of feeling it, oh man. So I played this Sarah Vaughan record. Wow, that woman could sing. And there's such a body and soul and dimensionality and thereness that was just coming out of these speakers. I was, my jaw was on the freaking floor. It just sounded so good. And Count Basie's band just swinging its asses off. What a performance by the band, by Sarah. Phenomenal. This one isn't, isn't hard to find, I'm sure. But anyway, that's what, the, that's what this speaker does so well. So let me talk a little bit about the bass. The 770s bass is surprisingly big and fat and juicy. Is it the ultimate in resolution of speed of definition? Mm, no, no, but it's so satisfying. Now, uh, Mission claims that the bass goes down to 30 hertz. M minus 6 dB point is 30 hertz. Now, I didn't get that. I was getting 37, 38 hertz where it was kind of falling off a cliff. 
bass uh, is um, very room dependent. You may get 30 hertz, I'm just reporting that I did not. But I found the bass very satisfying. This does not sound like a small speaker. No, it definitely doesn't. I've talked a lot about the mid-range, but in terms of the, the tweeter, the tweeter is beautiful sounding, not the most ex extended, not the most detailed in terms of sparkle and shimmer and all that stuff. It's good. It's certainly not a dull sounding speaker, but it's not one that hits you over the head with detail or clarity. And, I, and the other thing I would say about the tweeter and, well, sound staging, sound stage is surprisingly open. Not the biggest, not the widest, not the deepest, but in terms of the speakers just disappearing as sound sources, put it that way, yeah, they're big. They're, it's interesting because they're wide speakers and there was always this talk about the speakers have to be skinny so there's lower, less diffraction off the edge of the speaker, blah, 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 blah. Whatever, I don't know if that's true anymore, but all I can say is this speaker, even with its relatively wide baffle, opened up and was very um, not boxy sounding, let's put it that way. So yeah, I guess this is my, <laughs> I guess that was the beginning of, so Steve, what do you really think of the Mission 770, the all new 770? I think this is a phenomenal speaker. It, it, it overperformed in what I expected out of it. I thought it was going to be a little too polite, too reserved, and it's not that. But it's not for someone who is really a party animal. If you want to just rock out, and that's your, that's your main course, yeah, I think, I think clip speakers, horn speakers, uh, JBL speakers might be a better way to go. If you want to have that live sound, that transient, th those super fast dynamic transients and all that, Mm, I like this, but this is this is for someone. The 770 is more for someone who has uh, who likes everything, you know, all kinds of music. Hey guys, I just want to add this one extra bit. I kept listening to the Mission 770 after I after I shot the video, and even as I was editing the video, and because usually I'm back to my reference speakers, either the Cornwall Fours or the Magnapan LRS or the Buckhart S400. But this time I kept listening to the missions and I kept digging them more and more and more. I had this emotional connection to them. They really, I don't know, I, I can't explain why because all the things I just told you about them are, still stand, but I just really like these speakers. So anyway, they're gone now. Well, who knows how things work out in the future. But anyway, these are very special speakers. And now, speaking of being seduced, it is now time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, I like this. This one comes from Philip. He is a family man, an engineer, and also a factory owner. When you walk into the living room, you might not notice that the ceiling actually has a huge base dampener made of 5 millimeter thick Lithuanian plywood suspended and damped. It is very compliant and cancels frequencies from 57 hertz down. And there's a lot, a lot of room treatment in this room. Oh, this, oh, the rack is custom made to Philips specifications by Truss Die. Speakers are Quadril Titan Phonolog Arium. The integrated amp is a Prima Luna Evo 400 DAC. Musical Fidelity Trivista for two channel. The CD player is a Line Magnetic 215. The DAC for movies is a Cambridge M DAC Plus projector. There's a projector in there and it's an Epson 3. Cables are made by Audience in the USA, speaker and line cables. And the carpet is custom made, was custom made to Philips specifications and it was made in Tibet. That is a serious system. Thank you, Philip. All right, we are back. And my name is Steve Guttenberg, and I am the Audiophiliac. And if you like the show, if you really like the show, first hit that like button. That's really important. But after you do that, please consider joining my Patreon. That is the best way, by far the best way to support the show. And you can join for as little as a few dollars a month, and there's various tiers along the way. And in the top tiers, you and I get to talk every month at the beginning of the month. 
and I, I really enjoy these conversations with I, well, that I've had with my patrons. I get so much out of it. I truly do. Uh, and beyond that, oh, the podcast. There is a new episode at last. There's a new episode on the podcast, um, and it is an interview with a woman. And yeah, a woman, a woman audiophile, Char, and she has an Instagram page called Ladies Listen To. And she is definitely an audiophile, and she is definitely one of us. Now you can hear the I was going to say see, you can hear the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and iHeartRadio, those kind of places, but you can also hear it on my own website, which is called The Audiophiliac Podcast, and I will link to that below. And what else? I think we're good. So yeah, if you like the show, please hit that like button. And with that, I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching. And I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.